I'm Adam Horowitz, here with friends from Nuns and Nuns as we uh, make our way across the country on a road tour. Nuns and Nuns, I can share a little bit about, is a growing constellation of relationships, of collaborations uh, between women religious, N-U-N-S, nuns, and uh, millennials, uh, N-O-N-E, many of whom identify with a religion, may not identify with a religion, are spiritual but not religious. I found out about what they were doing through the organization I work for and I was blown away and really wanted to, to get involved. Only recently or within the last five years has this term nuns, N-O-N-E-S, come to my attention. 46 million people identify as nuns but it refers to um, folks who may, may select none of the above in terms of religious affiliation on some kind of questionnaire. They have a bad, a bad rap uh, for it because so many times it says religious affiliation, none. And to say none doesn't mean they don't believe in God. It doesn't mean they're atheist. It, it's just uh, they're searching. I really am sort of looking for a template, um, like a tried and true way of living that achieves what I want to achieve in the world and who I want to be in the world and every nun that I speak with is that template for me. My definition of a nun, N-U-N, for this purpose is that it's somebody that's very dedicated, given their whole life to God, have made a structure of their life built on prayer and study and community and ministry. I have never had the presence of any kind of uh, institutionalized religion in my life. And I had so many stereotypes about what nuns were, who nuns were. I um, get a lot of strength and I learn a lot um, from the uh, incredible women religious uh, who I've been able to be in community with. Um, from their stories, from the stories they don't tell and then prompt one another to tell um, about the work that they do in the world. And we've had conversations in cities across the country as these both sides realize how much we have in common, how much we have to learn from one another and to offer each other, um, and that we are in many ways trying to do similar work in the world. We realize um, and see each other in the gifts that we're bringing and that we all have really important and vital pieces to bring. It isn't so much uh, what we get out of it or did I make my point or did he make his point. The point is we are both speaking our truth and so it's wonderful to hear these young people uh, searching for the truth in their own lives. I think that faith emerges in relationship and whether that's relationship with a text or relationship with people who are no longer with us or relationship with one another and um, the natural world. And I think for me, most powerfully, faith emerges in, really, in our relationships with one another. Um, and we lose so much um, by building those relationships only with people who are just like us. The very fact that they want to hold on to the idea of spirituality and they make the distinction between spirituality and religion, that there's something there that they still want. They'll never say they're unspiritual, but it's the trappings that they have a hard time dealing with. And I think that the young people today, especially the ones we're talking about, the nuns, that they're, um, they're searching the same way we search. We know we grew up in a church where we lived with all kind of unquestioned answers and now young people are living with and dealing with unanswered questions. There's things that that they are reacting against not so much the spiritual part of it and we as communities religious communities we've dealt with that after the uh, in the 1960s there was a big church movement called Vatican II and much changed and we who grew up with all of the trappings, many more than you could even imagine today, we had to let go of those. And we did, we dealt with it. Uh, we can uh, be in the world uh, cooperatively um, and interdependently um, as opposed to uh, in ways that are based on domination. Um, and I am constantly amazed um, 
by the ways the sisters teach about that. I personally find a lot of inspiration in these conversations as I listen to uh, women who've, who've dedicated their entire lives to um, real powerful social action and live in, in community in a way that um, nourishes both contemplation and action. And I think there's a lot of yearning in my generation to find alternative ways of living lives, taking a prophetic stance in the world and being supported in community in doing that. So I see a great hope in the emergence of uh, new ways of being together um, in, in beginning to figure out how, um, how we bring that kind of kindness, that kind of commitment, um, lifelong commitment and, um, and belief that even when these crises seem insurmountable, um, that there is work that we can do in the world. It's been an, an amazing honor to just hear about people who have already dedicated their lives to a higher purpose um, and to a really in, in service in a way that I didn't fully appreciate that I want to do as well. Um, and so that's been a, a big source of inspiration for me. Uh, this is very hopeful to hear young people really interested in their faith journey and in uh, and wanting the support of community to do that. That's just such a great movement. And we have uh, things that we have learned from it. We've learned how to hold on to the certain things and to let other things go. And that's always valuable. On the other hand, as you get older, you lose energy. And that's what the people who are now committed to some of the same things we would be committed to in spades, you know, were the, we their age. You know, they, they can give us the energy. We're not an organization, but they are calling it a movement. We do have a website, um, and it's www.nunsandnuns, N-U-N-S and N-O-N-E-S dot org. And you can sign up there, see what we can get going.